start, we, we did a family day, something that we hadn't done in a long time that was well received by the police department. Uh, we're working on uh, improving their pay. We, got, we, gave them a, we, we uh, were able to secure a raise last year for a, a large portion of the police department. Um, in, in two instances over the last, I think, 12 months, uh, we've been able to get from the city, not only, so let me, let me back up. We, got a, we, we were able to get a raise just for the police department based on um, some structuring of the funds that we have in our agency. We got between a 5 and 15 percent raise for a lot of the officers on the, the department, which is, which is substantial. Um, when you've been face, facing a situation where officers haven't had pay raises in, in you know, 8 or 10 years, given, getting a 5 to 10 percent pay raise was, was meaningful for them. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to that, the city manager has been able to carve out uh, a two and a half percent raise, and then a, and another two percent raise that we recently got in the last, uh, uh, like I said, about a year. On top of that, um, on top of that, with like I said, the wellness programs and the, and the the new equipment, new computers for the officers coming from the Tucson Delivers program, um, the the just the environment within the police department improved significantly. What are some ways you're stretching your resources to try to? deliver good service with a shorter stay? Well, that's, that's a great question, and, and that's something that the police department, like I said, has been challenged with, right? How do we, how do we provide that great quality service? How do we provide the, the things that, that the community is asking for us to do with, with you know, less than what we would think is ideal staffing levels? Um, in 2019, we're going to stand up our ComStat 360 process. That's the number one priority for this police department in terms of uh, how, we, how we understand crime, how we understand um, what's going on out in that community. We are going to take a data-driven approach to handling um, crime issues within our, within our community. That starts with this ComStat 360 process. Really, the focus of that is going to be uh, crime, collisions, and community engagement. Um, and how do, we, how do we more effectively address the crime problem? How do we more effectively address the collision issue? I mean, the collision numbers are no, are, you know, they're no secret out there. We didn't do well in Tucson last year with, with collisions. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to work together with our transportation department. We have a new transportation director. We're excited about the collaboration we have there. Um, we're going to work together with the, with the community in, in this ComStat process. So historically, ComStat has been an internal driven um, data inspection of what the police department's doing, both from a from a you know a, a crime solving rate, you know number of calls for service, those kind of those kind of issues. Um, but we're going to take a little broader approach and not only look at ourselves and how we're doing in the community, but we're going to ask the community to come in and sit next to us and help us through some of these problems, um, which is something that uh, hasn't been tried here before and is really unique across the country to have community members helping us um, take different approaches to solving some crime issues. Please elaborate on it. How would that work? Well, we're still in the <laughs> development process with it. We've recently hired a new, uh, our, our new crime analysis superintendent um, who's, got, uh, who's got a significant experience in being able to process data like this and solve these issues. Um, but what we're, what, we're, what we're looking at doing is uh, having um, a, a increased geographic ownership for the police officers on our department. And that comes with being um, more knowledgeable of the community that you're serving, right? Knowing the business owners, being able to interact, not, just not walk into the school and say, hi, here's, here's, here's my name, Mr. or Mrs. Principal, here's my business card, here's how you get a hold of me, but really building a relationship with the schools, really building a relationship with the, with the neighborhood associations so that, so that those, that's a two-way street. And having them sit in the room with us when we're talking about um, some of the crime problems that are unique to a particular neighborhood or maybe unique to a business sector within this community because they see it day to day, right? They know, they know what they're facing. Um, the officers are there for a call for service and maybe come and go, uh, but who better to deal with that in a collaborative way than the, than the person that's actually experiencing it? Is this kind of a merger of modern data keeping and the old cop on the beat? That's a great description of it, I, I, and I think that's very fair. Um, we have we have great data, right? We know um, everything about all the calls that we go on. We know the, the times and you know what the resources were that it took to handle that. We can talk about how we solve crimes from a you know a solvency rate uh, or a or a, a crime solving rate. But where we haven't been able to really um, bridge the gap is to be able to get that data effectively into the hands of the, of the officers in the field who actually, who actually need it, right? 
Um, so this is a process that is going to not only help the management staff within the police department but and the and the under, the community understanding what those crime problems are but the third the third leg to that is to get the beat officers to get the sergeants that are actually dealing with those problems on a day-to-day -day basis in that same room too understanding the data and 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 having a conversation with not only the management staff but the community members who are impacted by it if members of the public want to become more involved in this how do they do that well, we, so that's a great question. We haven't figured that out yet. We're still in the development process, like I said, of the of sort of the structure of the CompStat 360 model, um, and that's going to be supported by our the chief's new community advisory council, which is up and running, um, which is a is a is a uh, a forum for the community to sit with the chief of police and have a conversation about um, you know what what their needs are and, and what his needs are and how we can how we can uh, sort of share some of those lifts. Um, so more to come on how the how the community is going to be involved in the CompStat process because, like I said, we're still sort of in the in the you know middle development stages of what that's going to look like from a structural perspective. Uh, are we ever going to get back to the days where, say, I, I've been the victim of a nonviolent crime like a burglary, and the burglar is not on site anymore, but I might still expect an officer to show up in a few minutes? Is that are those days long gone? So I think we're doing better with, with our with our with our response times. I don't have the response time data in front of us, but one of the things that we're doing with our, with the new communications department is establishing a criteria-based dispatching system. It's being used in places like Washington D.C. right now, and they're seeing uh, call response to, or um, call dispatch times as short as 90 seconds in most cases. Uh, and what that does is it creates basically a script for the call taker. So now the call taker is sort of intuitively asking questions based on their historical knowledge of what a call for service is, right? That somebody, let's use your example of the burglary. Somebody calls in and says they've been a victim of a burglary. The dispatch or the call taker now is intuitively asking questions based on their experience of, okay, here's, what, here's the information I need from this victim of the burglary. Moving forward, we're going to electronically, we're going to electronically um, establish a series of um, crafted questions that that call taker is, asked to, is asking of that victim, which allows them to get that information out in more of a structured format that allows them to get those questions out quickly. Um, and those questions and answers are being uh, sent right to the dispatcher as they're being asked and answered. So that call is now hitting the screen with information faster in a more detailed and structured format, and it's getting out to the officer quicker. Because sometimes we hear people say, well, you know, if, if I ever have a burglar, I'm going to say, well, I'm not sure whether he's still there or not because somebody will co come more quickly. Yeah. yeah and and a, a call such as that, if somebody hasn't checked their house or, you know, there's suspicion that the person's still there, we're, that the level of that call will be increased uh, accordingly. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get officers out there quickly. Uh, but our goal is absolutely to increase and improve those response times. You know, generally when we look at our level one, which is our most critical call response, right? That's the, that's the crimes in progress, the shootings in progress, things like that. We, do, we generally do a really good job of getting to those calls for service in the times that we've, um, we've identified or are, are, uh, you know, fit with that level of, of crime. But you, uh, level ones and level twos, we generally, like I said, we generally do a pretty good job. It's when we get to those lower level calls for service that you're describing that we're trying to improve. So not only do we want to increase our, our sworn staffing, but the community service officers that really help us get to some of those lower level calls for service, uh, we just got authorization to get that rank up to 57. Three years ago when Chief Magnus came on, they were we had 19 of them. So we've more than, um, we've more than tripled the number of community service officers. We've increased the hours for our stations, so you can come in to the police department um, earlier and later and, and file a police report in person with a front desk officer who's a commissioned officer or a community service officer, just like, um, just like you'd get if you were to call and we were to show up at your house. We've drastically improved our um, online reporting system. So we're trying to figure out new, like to, you know, to, your, to your question earlier, you know, what sort of ways are we trying to improve that? We're trying to look at innovative ways to do what we can do a little bit better with the resources that we have. Are there certain things that'll probably still be? Please go online and file your own report. Yeah, I think that's. I think there are some things that the community understands that that's just the that's the easiest and most efficient way, given the technology of you know the 21st century that we're in. That I can sit down and I can fill out a quick online form 
um, and get get that whether it's for my insurance company, whether it's uh, for documentation purposes for myself, um, and certainly for the police department. Those those pieces of information are going to go into this data-driven approach that we're going to take with CompStat 360, and we need that detailed information from them. When you're talking about the expanding the hours at the individual stations and yes. substations, what what are they now compared to what they used to be? I don't know the I don't know the hours off the top of my head. Pete, do you know what the well, we used to close at 5 o'clock, and now we're open until 10, except for the main police station. So, the other substations are open until 10. Uh, yeah, open later in the day. And, we, and we've, seen, uh, we've seen an increased <coughs> use of those hours. Uh, people are coming in to, with greater frequency after hours. And the officers that are sitting at the desk, if they're not taking calls from the public who are, who are walking in, they're able to pull calls off the screen. Uh, and call back complainants. So they're, we're not just having officers sit there and wait for somebody to walk in. We're, we're asking them to do, uh, to do some more work at those, at those stations also. When you're talking about traffic safety, what sort of efforts are, going, are directed that way now? Well, uh, we, we're constantly looking for grant opportunities, and we do have quite a few grant opportunities that, that the police department utilizes for bike, bicycle and pedestrian safety um, and things like that through our motor unit. Uh, we're, uh, you know, we're cha I think last year we were over over 60 collisions, that, uh, fatal collisions last year. I don't have the number right off the top of my head, but um, that's an alarming number. And uh, we've talked with the Department of Transportation, you know, the, the Transportation Director, and um, uh, the research from the protected left turn uh, trial that was done right there at Speedway and Campbell. That's yielding some uh, some positive results. So we're we're interested in, in some engineering solutions for some of the intersection related collisions. Um, education, is a, education is a big component of this. We, we can probably do more in that regard in terms of educating the community on, on safe driving patterns. Um, and obviously, you know, obviously there's an enforcement component uh, that goes along with uh, ensuring that uh, the community is driving safely and uh, we're working to reduce the collisions in those three ways. When you talk about engineering solutions, we've seen the city put a lot of resources into these very elaborately protected pedestrian crosswalks, the hawk lights and so on, and you still see people ignore those. What do you think that, sometimes they ignore them by just a few feet. Is there any remedy for that one? Well, that's a great question, and, and when you figure out the answer, yeah. uh, um, you know, that's, it's, it's difficult. It, it's, the education piece is difficult on the on the pedestrian uh, on the pedestrian issue. I don't know that the, I don't know that uh, I don't know what studies are out there or what data out, is out there that supports education being a uh, you know being a, a significant driver in reducing the the collisions that are pedestrian related. Um, we do have motor officers, and we do have uh, we have asked our our patrol divisions to to pay particular attention to those pedestrian issues. So. Um, that's one of the things that we're, like I said, in the in our CompSat process that we're going to pay keen attention to. It's, um, it, it's it's something that we know we need to we need to make some improvements on. Yeah. Uh, I think people are going to it'll be sort of on their mind issues of where's the department and gang issues and and also on immigration issues. I know that's a hot potato, but it's it's out there. What um, how's the department going to handle that kind of thing now? So in uh, in 2018, when we when we went back and did a and did a look at our um, at our at our gang related homicides, uh, we were doing pretty good with that. Um, you know that's that's been uh, that's been something that in this community I think we've had we've 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 done we've done a pretty good job with dealing with the gang issues and uh, and not really having a not really having a substantial. A gang <laughs> problem that that at least is is identifiable to us in the data that we're looking at. Um, immigration issues. I I I I would hope uh, that if you asked that if you asked the average Tucsonan how this police department um, does with immigration related issues, that they would tell you that we get an A plus in that. We have spent years dealing with some challenging legislation. We've spent years dealing with. Uh, with with situations in, in um, you know the national level that that really hit that really hit Tucson hard and we we uh, we're proud that that the relationships that we built with the immigrant communities in this town um, with the with the politicians and the and the, the management staff in the city uh, with our own officers with the community members that live in those populations I think we're pr we're pretty proud of the of the of the outreach that we've done, 
um, and we're proud of the position that we take with that. Uh, I think that um, we all understand that trust is, a, is, is the most important thing at the end of the day with, those, with, with people in those communities, and they have to be able to trust us. They have to be able to come to the police department and report a crime or get, get help from us and, and feel like we're going to give that to them to, to the best of our ability, and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, and we're, we're certainly not going to we're, we're not going to slide back in 2019. Um, we're, we're, we were just talking on Monday at our executive leadership team meeting about about ways we can improve outreach to some of the refugee communities that uh, that have that have grown here. Um, I I really I really believe that that's been a focus of ours for years and and will continue to be and and uh, and, and we're. We're, we're pretty solid in that area. Does the, the trust you're talking about depend a lot on not being perceived as a surrogate for immigration enforcement? Well, I mean, so our, I, think our, I think our data supports that we're, that we're not looking to, to, to serve that purpose, right? Um, you know, we've, 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 we've really done a, we've really made a concerted effort to not be in that, to be in that, not to be in that arena. Uh, and and this department believes in that. We're we're here to provide a we're here to provide a service. We're here to provide um, we're here to provide that to anybody that calls nine one one. And and that I, that has to that has to be that has to override every right. That has to override all of the. The legislation that has to override all of the all of the all of those all that sentiment, um, and we're making headway there. Now, I mean, we're asking about the issues we know about, but right. is there something on the horizon we don't know about? Some emerging issue that that people should know about now. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's emerging that we haven't uh, that we haven't really spent some time considering. Um, we. We uh, we talked about uh, just earlier this week. We talked about uh, our handling of runaways and missing person cases. Uh, we're going to do some work to improve how we're handling those. Um, it's not from a lack of a reporting perspective. It's not from uh, from anything like that. It's just from a is there a, is there a way that we can make this more efficient for uh, the community to report those crimes? Is there a way that we can Ensure that we're paying 100% attention to every one of those uh, missing person missing person cases, uh, and you know we we've um, we've seen some issues across the country with um, with runaway juvenile you know the the with runaway juvenile issues and and maybe a bit of a lack of a reporting or a lack of attention to the reports that are being filed, and we don't want to be in that space. I don't think we are right now. I think we're handling those very well. Um, but if we can if we can make some improvements in, uh, in in that regard, I think there's a little bit of room for us to do that. Um, in terms of in terms of like emerging crime issues, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that we're really struggling with or we haven't uh, we haven't thought through at least on a on a uh, on a leadership level. Yeah. On the on the missing children and, yeah. and runaway issue, yeah. is, is there uh, a feeling that it's like, well, they're runaways. They've they voluntarily removed themselves. How do, what do you do about it? Is, is it kind of a, no? I think that's I think that's the I think that's the trap that some agencies have fallen into, right? That oh, this it's just a runaway kid. They're, you know, it's a family issue. The police department doesn't need to be involved in that. Um, we've seen cases in the in the United States most recently uh, most recently in uh, um, on the East Coast where. Um, that unfortunately was the position that I think the, the departments took, and um, and that to the detriment of the child. Right? We need to make sure that it's not just a case that the, the child ran away and is it a, is it a neighbor's or is it a sleep? You know, do, doing something that you know 